Blood Time, the podcast that speaks to the bond, the emotion between coach and athlete at the interscholastic and intercollegiate level. Each interview, each segment will reveal that bond and what was learned, how they were transformed, and what each athlete took to the world at large from that transformation. These stories will warm your heart and astound you all together. Submitted for your approval, now it is blood time. It's blood time. Coach Cimarroni here. I want to thank my previous guest, Bob France, a wonderful guest. He was our first true non-wrestler. We're going to do more of those, but uh, just love the guy. And he talked about teamwork. He also talked about picking up his team mate. And he talked about the difference between a team sport and our sport, wrestling, the individual sport. But I, I also want to add this because in the Lee Kemp episode, the world champion episode, and he talked about how important his drill partner was in college of making him that NCAA champ and then on the, uh, on the world stage, the world champ. So drill partners are important in our sport. Teammates are important in team sports. And of course, teammates are important in, heck, life, your marriage, your family, your business, your charitable organization, whatever you're involved with. And the other thing he talked about was know yourself. And he found himself after 9-11. An amazing story. I uh, really, uh, really loved him sharing that uh, intimacy with us. And today, I have somebody here that I absolutely adore. I've known him since he was a young man. Uh, one, another former Beachwood wrestler, Beachwood Bison wrestler, and the owner of Affinity Whole Health and a number of other businesses, Brian Zide. Welcome, Brian. Thank you. Good to be here. Yeah, man. It's great to see your smiling face. All right. Um, one, of our, uh, one of our former um, interviewees and also a dear, dear, well, my best friend, Scott Peters, sends his love. <laughs> and you know him because he was your head wrestling coach. Very well. Yeah. Absolutely. So let's get right into blood time, what blood time means. And as we were talking off the air, uh, you just recently listened to a few of the episodes and you, you know the philosophy of, of, the, uh, of the podcast. Tell me a little bit about what high school wrestling, actually middle school wrestling meant to you because that's where you met the sport, correct? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and what high school wrestling meant to you? So y- y- unlike uh, most people, I didn't have, uh, you know, wrestling as youth wrestling. Right, right. Um, I actually grew up in Cleveland Heights, University Heights Elementary okay. School, and okay. I transferred to Beachwood in middle school, gotcha. uh, which, you know, middle school can be you know, weird, man. It, 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 I'm an <laughs> really expert weird. now. I got three, three kids in middle school there now. There you go. Oh my so God. kind of reliving that. But, sure. you know, as I got to Beachwood uh, in seventh grade, um, I was very, very small. Yes. Right? You know, yes. maybe right. 65 pounds. Oh, wow. You know, like that small. <laughs> you were yeah. a true cup of coffee. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> no, no, no fat, but no muscle. I, you I know, got you. So That's right. Skin and bone. Yeah, absolutely. So I, you know, in seventh grade, you know, I think I was kind of searching out to try to find my place in a right. new school. Right. You know, sure. and uh, a few months into the you know school year, I, I run into Scott Peters in the hallway who had right. just taken over that middle school program. Sure. I said, what's this wrestling thing all about? Yeah. You know, yeah. so yeah. Yeah. as fate has it, you know, uh, you know, kind of the rest is history. But sure. So so getting involved with wrestling in middle school. Um, I mean, I, I literally had no exposure to this sport. I, I thought we were jumping off, uh, doing, you know, body yeah, slams. Yeah, doing and, elbow smashes, uh, yeah, uh, yeah. right? Popping them in the chops Basically. and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. That was a uh, rude awakening. <laughs> yeah, showing up for those practices in middle school with uh, how, how rigorous those were. And right, right. the attrition of just people, you know, coming oh, yeah. in and just dropping out of the sport. And I was committed um you know, for the purpose of why I signed up in the first place, sure. drew, drove me all the way through, you know, high school, which was to be in, involved and have something that I could do and accomplish and, you know, be part of it. And be part you of know, it's interesting, yeah. too. You know, we talk about Bob France, know yourself. Mm-hmm. You, got, you started to know yourself. Yeah, exactly. You find yourself. Yeah. Right? Yeah, that's yeah no cool. doubt. Yeah. 
But uh, yeah, so in middle school, I mean, the sport for me, it was more of a tug of war match. It okay. wasn't, there was not a lot of chess. It was, yeah. I didn't really know what I was doing. I'd be in the matches and it was, I'd hear one voice, you yeah. know, I'd hear Scott Peters sure. voice. <laughs> and I Probably would just. Probably after you got off the mat in your head too, right? <laughs> all the time. Absolutely. All the time. But, but especially during the matches, sure. it was like, Brian, yeah. now circle left, you know, <laughs> lower your level, <laughs> post your left left, you know, and I would just do that. I didn't yeah. even know what was going on. Right. So it wasn't until many years later um, mm-hmm. where I could, you know, really fully enjoy and work on, you know, the sport from a strategy the standpoint. Of the sport. Yeah, exactly. the strategy. It, and it is a very strategic sport. It's amazing. For sure. For yeah. sure. And, I, you know, I was held back, again, my size. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, I think in middle school, I, I really don't, I wouldn't, wouldn't have thought I would be viewed as somebody as a big part necessarily of the future, yeah. you know, plans yeah. of that group that was coming up. Um, well, you were a late bloomer. Yeah, absolutely. And so many of us were. I mean, yeah. Yeah, so many yeah. of us. Yeah. I mean, Scott was a late bloomer. Yeah, that's you true. Know, Scott didn't become Scott until he was in college. Sure, yeah, sure. Yeah, it's crazy. So then moving into high school, mm-hmm. you know, my freshman year, I, I wasn't I wasn't more than 85 pounds, yeah. you know. Yeah. So yeah. it kind of set me back a little bit. Sure. I only had a match or two my freshman year. Sure, sure. So it wasn't really until sophomore where I kind of grew in to a weight class and Scott yeah. would always tell me just hang in there and yeah. you're going to grow into your weight well, class. He, and... he would know intimately because he was yeah. an 88 pound, 98 pound. Yes. We so, definitely yeah. had that in common Absolutely, yeah. for sure. Yeah. So good manner. Yes. Absolutely. Yes, Absolutely. Yes. So then, you know, through high school, um, you know, sophomore year, I finally got an opportunity to, sure. you know, really get in there and do your thing, do my thing. And, you know, season that year didn't end well for me, but it, you know, that was the adversity that, 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 that got you there. Yeah. But, but boy, you arrived as a junior. Right. I mean, you right. really arrived, and then you had a pretty good last two years of high school. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. How did that feel to become, you know, go from literally just struggling? Yeah. I mean, you always had it, but you're struggling. But then all of a sudden, now you're the man. <laughs> I mean, you know, there's some guys that still are the man. Sure. Okay. But now you're the man, you know? Yeah, you know, I would say that. It's, it's an interesting transition, isn't it? Yeah, it is, but that's why, you know, you talk about the sport, right? right? It's the ultimate sport of you get out what you put in, yep. you know? Right. And Scott would always say, just deposit this in your bank account, you know? Yes. And actually, you know, yes. you're going to need it let later. Let the interest grow. Yeah, and I, and I did. I let that grow. And sure. I, you know, just never really deviated from the reason that I was doing this in the first place, right. you know? And I think that was that was key. So, so, um, you, so you're true to your core. Absolutely. And, you know, we talk about it every day in practice at Chagrin Falls, and I was doing that at Beachwood. It's an honest sport. Yeah. It is the most honest sport. Mm-hmm. You can't hide. No. You know, but it tr- it reveals who you are, I think. Sure. Right? And so you had that happen to you, and um, you made the state finals your senior year. Yes. So tell me yes. a little bit about that that process, that senior year that got you to that almost pinnacle. But right almost. There, almost. Yeah. There. But, hey, yeah. listen, you know what? Well, it happens. Well, it happens. No. that that. that that happens, you know. So <laughs> it's been 25 years. I understand, right? but it still happens. Right? It, it was yesterday. <laughs> exactly yeah, right. Yeah, People so. don't realize that. No, it's amazing. no. I remember. It's burned in your memory. I remember yeah. everything about uh, that day, and yep. you know the sounds, the feel, the smell. Every, you know, it yep. might as well have been yesterday for me. Sure. So yeah, it came up a little bit short, and I think again another some of the adversity that help has helped me. You know, um, I I, I kind of feel for the most part that I left it on the mat. You know, and that's, uh, you know, I, I, and I, I want to stop you there because mm-hmm. I tell my kids, I said, listen, if your best, yeah. your absolute best is to take third in the state mm-hmm. and you take fourth, uh, I got to look at you a little sideways. Right. If your absolute best is to be a 500 wrestler mm-hmm. and you're 500 plus one, sure. you're my hero. Sure. So I know that you and so many of our Beachwood wrestlers get ready and leave it on the mat. Yeah. And they come out there. Yeah. So that's cool. So I can live with it that way. Exactly. For sure. Yeah. And then I would say that, you know, the sport really, I know it builds character. So we're going to just say this. to the audience, you took second in the state. Yeah. yeah. Second. <laughs> that's right. At yeah. 119 pounds. Correct? Yes. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I was fourth my junior year. Fourth your junior year. Yeah. Great, so I was great. kind of progressing, getting yeah, there. Absolutely. But absolutely. I wanted to finish with odd numbers, not even. <laughs> that's right. Crooked numbers. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Absolutely. So, so tell me about that. Ha- that happens to you mm-hmm. in a great way. You know, it, it, again, it's, it's, it's adversity, but we like to say also to failing forward. Yeah. You know, we learn from those. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And it wasn't truly a failure, but it, it was something that you came up short of your expectation. Yes. Or your desire. Yeah. So that, then you go into University of Miami, a great university. Mm-hmm. A lot of our Beachwood wrestlers that went there, a lot of our Beachwood 
athletes went there. My brother went there. Yeah. Meet some great people there. Okay. Mm-hmm. I think you meet lifelong friends there, don't you? Absolutely. And you go into business with them. Yeah, absolutely. And yeah. So tell me a little bit about that. Well, I can tell you first that Miami, the you know, I know this this sport of wrestling of ours is an individual sport, but sure. you know, we had the benefit and luxury in high school. We had a team. Yes, you know, so it may be you're out there on your own in the mat, but it's a shared experience with, you know, 15, 20 guys, you know. Uh, So so it's a little different moving to the next level. Obviously, Mm -hmm. I think what I talked about at the core in high school, for me, that really didn't exist anymore at at the next level. You know, I wasn't necessarily searching out my purpose in my, you know, Uh um, I learned so much to this point. Um, And the number one thing would it would be. Self confidence, you know, understanding and believing in yourself at the core, not cockiness, but right. you know, self love. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that you Self-love. just know what you do, you can accomplish. You know, if you just put the right mentality, work ethic, and everything towards it. So, so, um, so let me ask you about that, Brian. When did when did that when did that light bulb go on? Was there something that Scott said? Is there something that a coach said to you that said, "Man, I could do this." Um. Or was it just over the? Over I think it time? was over time. Gotcha. You know, Scott had a, just an amazing ability back then of, you know, from a coaching or management standpoint of mm. breaking you down and building yeah. you back up. And gotcha. he just was so great at knowing when, you right. know, and how, right. you know, and, and all that stuff. So, so it was a I, body of work. Absolutely, it was. yeah. Gotcha. It was just a consistent message. Yes, that came through. Yes. Gotcha. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So so going back, I guess, to Miami, uh, yeah. I didn't uh, have a whole lot of uh, uh, time spent in wrestling there. So uh, but but after graduating from there. Yeah. You know, I actually went to go work at a UBS Financial Services. Oh, great. As a, great organization. Yeah. As a yeah. financial advisor sure. in, in uh, 1999. Nice. Um, so <clears throat> I uh, this was back in the days where it was, you know, dial for dollars, oh, you yeah. know, open accounts, right. come in. First. I still do that. <laughs> I'm, di- I'm dialing for sponsors now. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> this is this is straight white pages, you know. I, I you. Mean, oh yeah, 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 right. Yeah, right, yeah. I got so you. you know, it can't really do it much today, yeah. but you know, needless to say, it was first in, last out of the office kind of mentality and grinding, just right. reminding me of my middle school wrestling days. You gotcha. know, just not really questioning anything, but at the core of leaving college for me was a drive to have financial independence, gotcha. you know, like gotcha. it was to be included in something. Mm-hmm. I wanted to basically live my rest of my life on my own terms, if you will, doing okay. things I enjoy. Just yeah. wasn't interested in the nine to fiver right. Uh, right. situation. So, and so you uh, had that foundation of just yeah. saying, I'm going to, there's nobody that's going to outwork me. Oh, for sure. And there's yeah. nobody that's going to out strategize me. Yes. So not only working hard, but working mm-hmm. smart. Well, it, yeah, it was a progression. Similar to wrestling, it was get in, you know, you start and you just work, right? And then you get smarter and then you learn the nuances and the strategy involved with with whatever you're doing. Yeah, because once you get cross-faced, there's a way to not get cross-faced again if you really get your... For sure. Together, right? And Absolutely. you don't want to get cross face. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> exactly. Right. So you bring that to business. Yeah. yeah. And ultimately, business is just a uh, series of decision making, sure. you know, and you know, you're gonna, not always going to make the right decision. Right. But, you, you know, the big decisions you need to get right. Yeah. Um, and, uh, you know, try to focus on that. To use a different sport analogy, I guess, you got to swing the bat once yeah. in a while. Yeah. Yeah. But I don't think people realize, you know, that if you dribble one off the end, you still yeah. got to leg it out. Yeah. You know what well I mean? Well said. Well said. So. And also, too, you know, I tell my kids, I go, you're going to fail more than you're going to win. Yeah, absolutely. You know, and if you if you fail seven times in baseball out of ten, mm. you're in the Hall of Fame. <laughs> right. Crazy, right? Yeah. Okay? And if uh-huh. you fail six times, you're the best ever. Mm-hmm. So you're failing more than you win, mm-hmm. and you're the best ever. Right. So it's interesting that you're, you're bringing that up. Mm-hmm. So you're out there swinging. Oh, yeah. So yeah. you're out there swinging in the early, yeah. late 90s, early 2000s. Yes. And, you know, mm-hmm. and so tell me a little bit about how that how that foundational piece led you to what you're doing now with this which yeah. really, really cool company that you've got just, you know, killing it. Sure, cool. sure. Yeah, so as I mentioned, I started, you know, in the financial business and just, you know, again, opening accounts and, yeah. you know, trying to gather assets. Sure. You sure. know, and so after I did that for a few years with success, mm-hmm. then I started getting smart. Then I would hire interns, 
gotcha. to make the calls for me. Yeah, you know? I'm you living go. off Raymond noodles, but you know, yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah. for a period so what, of time, right? yeah, yeah, didn't didn't matter to yeah, me exactly. And so I was able to get the help, and then simultaneously with my college buddies, mm-hmm. open up a business called Avalon Financial Corp over in Westlake, yes, which we yes. still okay. operate today. Nice, yeah. Nice. Bought and sold some some businesses here. Nice. Yeah. Um, about six seven years ago, I was presented with an opportunity. Okay. And uh, a friend of mine w- was a patient going oh. to uh, okay. uh, Texas to do hormone optimization. Mm, mm. And we started sure. talking. It was interesting sure. to me, and yeah. yeah, you know, started doing some research and okay. talking to people. And well, you're a researcher. I mean, for that's, sure. That's what you do. You got to do your homework. You got you yeah. to use your intellect, right? Yeah, yeah absolutely. absolutely. And so you, you liked that. You li- you thought you thought it was right. Absolutely. Yeah, so it felt you, right. After you thought it was right, tell me the process, you know, that you went through to, to open that business. Mm-hmm. And then how have you guys grown that business? What What's what's happened with that business since, since you said, I'm going to do this? Right. You know what I mean? Well, yes. The, the decision-making to get into it you know, was I had to have a vision of of how I could make this work and be realistic about it. Sure. You know, and create baseline examples of if it. You know, how to how to get it started and launched and get the plane off the ground and all that. Yeah. That's the first part. Then you worry about flying it after that. Absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> but because um, there there was some controversy when you first opened it, it wasn't there with the, with the technology of it, or am I am I miss. What, it. Well, what there we some... do there is okay. focused on, you know, uh, primarily on men yes. and hormones, which are, you know, we do testosterone. Okay. So it has it had a stigma, you know, from yeah, from, ath- I mean. yeah, from yeah. athletes and sure. baseball and PEDs yeah. and all this stuff. And that's and, not what this is. No, this is a, a medical program, you know, sure. controlled and prescribed by doctors, sure. you know, to keep to elevate your levels, but to keep them in a in a healthy higher yeah. range. So this is for know? people that are having just issues with that type of a situation that they would, you know, have. Yeah, it's actually needs, right? for the majority of people over 35 because everyone's go. losing their hormone levels and the testosterone drops over time and sure. we get you back and then you feel, yeah. you get that energy and that, you, that you had in your 20s. So so it, it is about, you know, feeling energetic, mm-hmm. but it's also, there's also some other medical things that really help. There's other medical pieces that really help the human yeah. continue through life, right? Oh, absolutely. So what, what are the, some of those... What are some of those essential things that you guys are doing? Well, we see all the time people come to us because it's like they don't even have the motivation anymore. You know, yeah. you, you go to the, the gym yeah. and you do what you were doing, but you're not really getting anything out of it. At least uh, you feel that way. Yeah. You know, so yeah. it's a good jump start for people. Sure. You know, to get them going and, and, you know, you get results. Yeah. And then you get motivated. It's compound effect. Sure. You know, so. Sure. So maybe it saves off some depression. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Absolutely. And, and also, heck, if you're motivating people, yeah. then we're producing stuff. Absolutely. Right? Yeah. <laughs> you need to produce, we're producing content here. I love it, Brian. <laughs> Thanks so much. Hey, guys, I want to thank Affinity Whole Health and the owner, Brian Zide. He uh, started this company to get you feeling like you were in your prime. You can reach this company at feelgreatcleveland.com. Founded, obviously, by a former wrestler athlete and his partner, who's also a former wrestler and athlete. The whole goal for this is to get you feeling like you're in in your prime, but also uh, helps you with muscle definition and strength, increased libido, increased energy and drive, increased mental acuity, obviously increases your confidence if you get all those and increases recovery time from workouts if uh, if you like all those things and you want all those things check them out at feelgreatcleveland.com thank you again brian zide and affinity whole health you learned a lot of lessons in the wrestling room from the wrestling staff from your teammates tell me how those translate into business what what are, what are you doing in business that reminds you or, or echoes from that time. Sure, sure. Yeah. You know, I've got a, probably a lot of examples. I, I think one that comes to mind right now is I think we learned back in high school what gets tracked gets done. There you go. You know, yeah. and something as simple as we have the the, the sticker charts on the wall, right, Love for it. takedowns and pins. And yep. it was just such a motivating. You see it, you want to add to that, and you're focused on it. Basically, then how do I do that? Right. You know, so – what gets tracked gets done has been something that's always been with me, gotcha. you know, whether it's for myself personally sure. or people that we hire, you know, to set okay. them up with the right 
infrastructure okay. that they're focused on the right things that need to be tracked and accomplished. And what type what type of personalities are you attracting or looking for in your business? Well, you can't teach heart. Uh, you know, and sometimes that. uh that's the, the a tough one to see what's really underneath everything. Sure. Right. So sure. Um, the, the hiring side has been a bit of a trial and error, you know, everywhere, though. I, everywhere. It's tough. You know, I, it's so tough. you're, you're, you're no different than, gosh, I hear it all the time. And I, I find it even more difficult now with kind of the next generation here. Uh, I it's, hear you. you know, it's tough yeah. and, yeah. uh, kind of have to weed through that. Sure. Um, but, sure. uh. But with grit and determination, yes. you do it, right? Yes. And you say, screw it. I'm going to just get it done. Yeah, right? Our last guy we hired was a wrestler, so that okay. was easier. I, okay. I already knew he had the heart. So. Right. Wrestlers in business. Go to that network. There you go. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Um, so so that's great. So you hired heart. You hire you know, people that want to do the work um, that also are willing to be held to an accountability standard. Absolutely. Right? And that tracking is accountability, you know? Mm-hmm. Also, too, motivation, ambition, mm-hmm. all those good things. And uh, so you're growing. Yeah. So now you're what, down in Columbus? Yeah, so we're in Columbus uh-huh. and we're opening in Pittsburgh now. Oh, congrats. Yeah, thank that's you. Awesome. We built a, a pharmacy also now Fantastic. that's been operating in Independence. And, Wonderful. And we also have a virtual network and uh, 30 doctor's offices in a dozen states around the country. Yeah, that's yeah. that makes a ton of sense. Yeah, so Absolutely. we're growing. We're, uh, we're going. That's you fantastic. Know. So, so. Tell me a little bit about, you know, we're, we're going to circle back to the high school. Yeah. You know, that's really where we, we really kind of get our thing going, mm-hmm. you know. Is there any stories or any, any ideas or any concepts that came out of some comments or some situations right. that occurred during that time that you now really define who Brian Zide is? Right, right, you right. Know? Boy, uh, it's hard for me to nail down... Uh, one particular event okay to be okay. honest with you sure it sure. was work hard play hard you know yeah, uh, yeah. we had so much so good, such good times back then and sure. also yeah. so many you know uh beat downs and breakdowns that uh <laughs> i love it i love it well i i remember i was talking to kevin fine okay sure. remember kevin yeah, yeah, love him. kevin's yeah. a great guy he's a dear friend of mine um he he just actually just went over to uh i believe um Oh gosh, he was at Sherwin Williams. Mm-hmm. Now he's at, uh, I think he's at Kohler. No, not not at Kohler. He's going to kill me. But one of the okay. Fawcett companies, right? You know, that's sure. over here in Westlake. Okay. Yeah, I can't remember the name of it. But anyhow, terrific guy. And he just was a guy that came out mm-hmm. like as a sophomore, right? Yeah. And made state as a junior. Yeah, he's right? impressive. Right? And he said that he went to a party. Okay. Okay. And Chad Silverstein, who was your co-captain, uh-huh. right? Also took a second to say that you. He was drinking a beer or something, and Chad got in his face, oh. and he's like, "What's up with this?" And it was just a, it was a whole process, it was yeah. a whole philosophy. It was like, "Dude, we're paying attention to the team." Mm-hmm. And he says, "I'll never forget that." He says, "It was it kind of pissed me, up. It pissed me off, yeah. but I got it. I didn't get it sort of then, but now I really get it." That's funny. Did you remember stuff like that? Or yeah. Like- well, I mean, when I say we were all in, we were all in. Yeah. I mean, I yeah. didn't uh, drink alcohol in right. high school. I mean, right. it was, it was all singular focus sure. you know so sure. it wasn't going to get derailed there yeah and um, you know we had that from the coaching staff oh yeah you know because yeah. i remember going in i said look it was it was a no tolerance policy mm-hmm. when i was the head coach and and scott took that uh as well but we didn't drink right you know i remember i remember um i think it was 92 it was my last year as the head coach we went to uh the colony okay yeah okay I remember and um and we're having our first drink of the year you mm-hmm. know it was in mid of March, and you know, I don't know what the hell we were drinking a beer or something, and it was um, an underage girl there, okay. and she was from Beachwood. Mm-hmm. And we pulled her over and said, like, "Look, you, you were taking you home." Yeah, and she, I saw her like ten years later. She was in line getting diapers for a kid, and she goes, "I remember you. <laughs> you took me out of that out of that colony and took me home. Okay. I was pissed at you then, but I thank you now." Yeah. You know, so it's kind of interesting when you hear that kind of stuff. But you now have kids that are yes. now in middle middle school. And so you remember some of those lessons learned. Tell me a little bit about what's happening with middle school kids now. Right. You know, right, and right. some oh, of the stories boy. you're hearing and what, what what's Daddy Brian now doing? Oh, there's a lot of drama. You know. <laughs> it's like yeah. little things that 
to your children in middle school are the biggest things in the world, but at the end of the day, they're such little things and, oh, wow, you know, right? dealing with, with that and, and moving past and, you right. know, uh, stuff like that. But no, I got three kids and sixth seventh eighth grade oh my gosh you know my my yeah. wife who i have been with since high school yeah you right, know so right. wrestling helped give me the confidence to find the prettiest girl in the school <laughs> right. keeper you know <laughs> absolutely so, how so, long have you been married so we've been married 16 years oh congratulations. Yeah, and been together 26 years wow. so yeah wow. that yeah. is fantastic most of my life at this point you know yeah that's that's beautiful <laughs> yeah. and you're uh, living in aurora yes right mm-hmm. so they got a great program Yes. Holy cow. Yes, yes. I mean, they are they are gunning for a state title. Absolutely. You know, um, I remember uh, recently Johnny Papish, the head coach, yeah. just reached out to me, uh, sent me a very nice note that okay. he was pleased to do that. And um, I just recently reached out to two former Aurora brothers. I want to talk to them. I'm not going to mention their names. Okay. But people in Aurora know who they are. Gotcha. Um, love to have those guys in studio talking about the brother fights oh, boy. <laughs> and oh, some, boy. and some of the, yeah. cause you guys had some scrapes. Yeah. yeah. Some scraps with the Aurora team back then. We I did think your senior year. You guys took fourth in the state. Yeah. I think they were third and they were third. Right? Yeah. And but that was some... our, it was our rival for sure. Yeah. At least for me, it was yeah. um, always. So I, it's been I've been in I've been living there now for 15 years, so I'm sure. a little bit past that. But it is kind of weird. It is I'm weird. still Beachwood, but you know. Well, it's I I had three kids that graduated from Aurora, right? You know, so right. I got three Greenmen, right? <laughs> so right. and I lived there 20 years, right. so it was crazy also to be there too. See, it helps for me that I never lost to an Aurora wrestler. There you go. So <laughs> I can you know hold my head up and walk around the city. You know. That's right. <laughs> Twins is the cat. You never lost to none him. of those guys. <laughs> Absolutely, no. mm-hmm. I love it. So Brian, you know we had a we had a, a great uh, a great run at Beachwood, and now they're they've rebuilt, mm-hmm. and uh, Aurora's got a, a great program. Um, Chagrin now is is yeah. rebuilt too, and so I guess that's what it's all about. Tell me about what it felt like to be part of that rebuild at Beachwood. Did you have any concept of that, or do you just? I'm just doing this. I do more so now than sure than then. Sure. You know, back then I don't think we really we were too in the moment in the weeds. And that's know, what that's will. what you want to be. Yeah, you, you want to be in the moment. You want to yeah, be in the absolutely. weeds too, and yeah. just working every day to get better. Right. Um, but yeah, looking back is really cool. You know, to see the that we really you know we're at the f- forefront of you know helping that program or bringing that program back as far as the team goes. You know, because sure. there's a lot of individual. Sure. People that, you know, were successful, but as a team, right. it had been a long time, I think, since there was success there. And it's amazing how many successful people came out of that program. Yeah. I mean, it's truly crazy oh, how many a, business successes yeah. and mm-hmm. philanthropic successes yeah. and, you know, educational successes oh, yeah. and military successes. I mean, mm-hmm. it's just, it just, it's just nuts. Mm-hmm. Well, I, I just love talking to you. Same here. It Appreciate was fantastic. It. And I wish you all the best with your family, your growing family. Not the green men when they're wrestling against the Tigers, Absolutely but not. every other time they're fantastic. <laughs> right. um, and also to your businesses, of course. Right. Um, and uh, what I'd like to ask you mm-hmm. is to leave the audience with something that you'd like to share with them as far as what coaching meant to you and what you're doing with it now. Well, I think there's a lot of uh, connections or similarities with coaching and with management and business, okay. right? Because it's that connection. It's, sure. it's, it's the ability to get the most out of somebody, you know, and their yeah. talents. And, you know, and so that's no different really in, in business and you're working. I mean, you can't right. really run successful businesses without people, you yeah. know, and you can't, you yeah. know, those people have to have the right management you know and mindset and someone that they want to perform i mean you know in high school wrestling it was like yeah you if the coach is looking at you you may try a little harder sure but we had so much respect you know for the guy in charge that it didn't matter if he was looking or not right you know right he was in your head and no matter part of the family yes Right. Yeah. Right. So you're bringing that to business. Yeah. You're bringing that family. That... I'm trying. I don't think I'm as good as he was, but I, you know, I'm trying. I'm learning from well, those lessons. Hard. Yeah, it's hard to, yeah. in business to 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 engender that mm-hmm. because of you know when you put money in things, it's different. It yes. changes things. And you're hiring adults, and there's sure. a lot of outside noise and distractions. Sure. You know, sure. where in in school, you know, you got the kid for a couple hours, you got him. You know, right. it's right. to focus. So. But yeah, I mean, a lot of those things uh, that I've learned from from coach and, and yourself included. Oh, that's thanks. One of my 
coaches as Absolutely, well. Absolutely, yeah. That's you right. Know? I forgot to mention that. <laughs> That's so right. I had learned you for a couple of years. You did. Absolutely. You did. You we did. had fun. Now, we those are my eighty-five pound years. Exactly. Right? <laughs> That's right. When you were you were yeah. finding yourself. That was yeah. It was cool. Yeah. It was cool. Well, I'm 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 heartened to hear that that you know that those resonate. Yeah. Oh yeah. You know, and that. Uh, but you're right. It is. It's not the same. Mm-hmm. Okay. But you have to be able to adjust. Right. Okay. And like you said, get work harder mm-hmm. and work smarter yeah. to build that same type of engender that same type of family mm-hmm. atmosphere. And if you, you if you get a good se- a facsimile of that, mm-hmm. you got a successful business. Yeah. Right. So it's heartening to hear that. Well, Brian, I, I really thank you for coming in. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. It's fun. And pass it along. We uh, we want. All of our former athletes to do it as best as they possibly can Mm -hmm. and just pass those lessons on. And I'm glad to hear that uh, things are going well for you and your family. Thank you. Thank you. Brian Zide. All right. We are blood. This is Coach Cimarroni. Love to all. I want to share my thought of the day with you. In a battle of wits, do not be unarmed.